Hi, hello, how are you? Craig Chapman here with part seven of this series on experimenting with neural network simulation. In my last video, I revisited the math that we used in our earlier sessions and introduced some simple vector and matrix notation to make it a little easier to understand. However, I only covered the forward action of a neural network in the last video. So in this part, I'll be taking the same approach, but this time looking at back propagation to feed our error back through the network and therefore train the network. Before we get started, however, I'd like to remind you that I now have a Patreon campaign relating to AI experiments. This video series is currently being re-edited, ready for upload to this Patreon page, so please consider checking it out for future educational videos relating to neural networks. And so now let's get started looking at backpropagation. So this is, once again, the same neural network that we've been working with in previous videos. We're going to calculate the total error for this network, that is how far the output is from our desired target output, and then propagate part of this error back through the network to adjust its weights, and therefore uh, gently nudge the network towards the direction of the correct or desired output. So this process is often referred to as minimizing the error, and as the error approaches some minimum value, the network is considered to be trained. This process of feeding the error information back through the network is called backpropagation, and the technique that we'll be using for this example is known as gradient descent. And this is because we calculate the gradient of each neuron in relation to its desired output, and then adjust the network along that gradient towards the desired output. Okay, so to get started, we first need to calculate the error delta. That is, how far is our output from our network off from the desired target output? So we simply subtract each of the output values from the target values and negate the result. The next thing we need to do is calculate how much each of the output neurons contributes to the result, that is, its gradient to the output. And we do this in two steps. First, we calculate the derivative, which for our sigmoid function is the output subtracted from one, all subtracted from the output. And then to complete the gradient with respect to the error value, we take each of those values and multiply it by the error delta. So this gives us our gradient vector. As the hidden layer is the input to the weights that we're trying to adjust here, let's bring the hidden layer values in. And now we can calculate our weight adjustments as the gradient values multiplied by the input neuron values, in this case the hidden layer neurons, and then multiplied by our learning rate, which if you'll remember from our previous videos is 0.5. So when we subtract our weight adjustments from the existing weights for W5 through W8, we get the new values for those weights. And if you refer back to our earlier videos, you'll see that the values match, thereby confirming our results here. So now we can move back to the hidden layer. The gradient calculation for this layer, that is the amount by which this layer affects the output, needs to take into account the output layer. So we'll take the already calculated gradient from the output layer and use that as our starting point. We'll create a new matrix to represent the weights in the output layer. Now, previously, when we uh, created a matrix to represent the output layer, it was ordered left to right, top down. So it would read W5, W6, W7, W8. However, that matrix was built to represent the weights as they relate to the output neurons. As we're considering these weights now from the perspective of the hidden layer neurons, we have to order them accordingly. So for example, H1 is connected to W5 and W7, and so the first row of our matrix reads W5, W7, and accordingly the second row reads W6, W8, as those are the weights that connect H2 to the output neurons. So we now get a new gradient simply by multiplying this matrix, which represents the weights between the hidden layer and the output layer, by the gradient for the output layer. So this multiplication provides us with this new vector, which represents the new gradient values for our hidden layer. In the same way that we calculated the partial derivative for the output layer, we do the same again for the hidden layer. This time, of course, we're taking the partial derivative of neurons H1 and H2, rather than output neurons O1 and O2. And finally, we can calculate the weight adjustments for neurons W1 through W4. For the first row, we're multiplying the first of our new gradient values, with the first of our partial derivative values for hidden neuron 1, and then multiplying the result with our input vector n1. We do the same again for the second row using n2. So now let's adjust our weights w1 through w4 with the new adjustments, 
And again, you'll see that the values we get are the same as those previously reviewed. So allowing for some calculation rounding, uh, our results are confirmed here. As a side note, backpropagation can continue in networks with more layers by simply repeating the steps of copying back the gradient values and calculating the partial derivatives with regards to the respective neurons. So short but sweet, that's it for this part. My name is Craig Chapman and thank you for watching and don't forget to check out my Patreon campaign. Thank you.